Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged Plus. Now today we're going to be talking about smart batteries and I'm joined by Chris Wright from Moixa. Chris, thank you very much for coming along. Just explain the very basics. Why is that a smart battery? Why is it not just so, a battery? Yeah, I mean the fundamentals of, 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 of what you want to do with one of these batteries is, is to charge when the energy is cheap and low carbon and use that energy when the energy that you would be using in your home is high carbon and high cost. However, what we add to that is to, is to use sort of artificial intelligence technology and machine learning technology to look at weather forecasting for tomorrow, to look at your history of how you use energy and to make a personal prediction for you for how much energy your solar panels will make tomorrow and how much and when you will use energy in your home. And so out of that, we can then make a personalized plan for what's the best way for you to kind of charge up. Should you charge up in the middle of night from low carbon energy and wind energy from Scotland or something, or should you be um, waiting for your solar panels to charge up your battery in the middle of the day? Well, you need to have an idea of what the weather's going to be like to be able to do that. And you need to also know the patterns of when that particular person plugs in their electric car or uses their energy. Not telling them when they should do things, but learning how they do things and then adapting to their lifestyle and making the battery really smart by having it, you know, do that work for them. So someone's got one of these in their house, they're not having to interact with it necessarily. It will, it will, no, we will try it interacts with them rather. Exactly. We try and learn their patterns. We try and learn from, from how they use energy, how they work. Um, you know, do they work at home on a Tuesday and Tuesdays are really different? You know, what are their patterns like so that we can understand that? And then we also learn, you know, about the patterns of their solar panels. You know, right. You know, one house might be shaded at four in the afternoon in, a, in June or something. We can learn those patterns and use that to really make the best prediction for when it will be the best time to charge up the battery and when it will be the best time to discharge the battery. Now, because when I first heard of Moixo, that was, I, I think it was a project in Oxford, in, in, mm. uh, in Cowley, where, where you had, a, this is why I'm going to remember it wrongly, but a lot of batteries that were sort of connected to each other and operated effectively as one. Is that, have I got that roughly exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So the next stage of that is if you think that then for thousands and thousands of users around the country, um, we know when they're going to be discharging and when they're going to be charging. And we know at what state of charge those batteries will be because we predicted that for each and what, every one of those customers. So out of that, we're then able to say, okay, well, when is flexibility available to the grid? When could we choose to delay charging or choose to discharge early? in order to provide a service back to the local DNO, for example. So in, um, down in Sussex, we're working to deliver for the DNO there, UKPN, flexibility from you know, many batteries by understanding when they're going to, that's going to be needed, putting those batteries in the right place so that they can deliver that service if it's called on. And then, so that's the next stage of that is out of you know, predicting, understanding, learning, then you're in a really good place to deliver that flexibility. Now, it's that flexibility that really enables the next stage of, of the grid. So the actual capacity of any one individual battery is probably less important than it's massive. I mean, because there was a time I went through where I want, I want a gigawatt of storage at my house. So that, you know, but actually, you don't really need that. I mean, what, what is the kilowatt hour capacity? of? So of this, this is, this is um, 4.8 kilowatt hours. Right. So that's about half the energy that the average house in the UK uses in a day. We do larger ones. We do up to a 9.6, so it's twice as big, closer to that. And some people, it depends how much solar they have and what their patterns are, what makes sense for, for a person. But I guess the point would be that, um, yes, you want, to, you want to kind of like make sure that that battery gets used as much as possible. And, you know, creating these aggregate groups is a way of kind of, of making that available and making that give benefit to the grid. Now the grid has to pay you as a customer for them to use your energy, and your battery, but that's much better and cheaper and lower carbon than them turning on a 
gas fire pass another gas fire, yeah and i mean is there have you noticed since you've been working with this the well the, the, the things that i think have changed as the energy capacity of batteries has increased yeah. and the cost of them the unit cost of them has gone down is that box now cheaper than it would have been 10 years ago well certainly this is better value than the first battery we did which was smaller capacity this is larger capacity for similar cost right then the cost of those batteries is coming down at much the same type of um, speed as solar panels have come down and you know this is a newer thing than solar panels but but if we look to solar panels you've seen that you know when uh, the feed-in tariff was launched in 2010 it was about 15,000 pounds to have a solar panel system yeah. on your roof yeah. and now it's about three and a half thousand pounds. Those economics, that sort of kind of like powerful kind of um, cost curve is coming to batteries as well. Because right. I mean, the other thing I find incredibly encouraging is, you know, there is without question, the early adopters of, you know, I'm guilty myself <laughs> of, uh, of, you know, battery storage, electric cars were, you know, economically privileged, I think it's fair to say. Yes. But I'm now seeing more and more things like Moixa batteries, heat pumps, uh, heat storage systems in affordable homes. Yeah, and I think that that will be driven by a number of things. I mean, we saw in the solar world, to use that as a comparison again, one of the things that drove a lot of um, solar in the UK and is still driving huge amounts in Australia and the USA is the model where the homeowner doesn't have to buy it. What they're doing effectively is getting some benefit from the solar being on their roof, but effectively they're leasing their roof as a power plant. And so that economics will come also to these batteries, driven by being able to utilise them for flexibility services and selling that to the grid. Because I mean, I think that's what's exciting about it is, you know, the, the, the basics of it is, you just, anyone can imagine that, you know, there's a lot, a lot of batteries packed into a box, put it on your wall, you wire it into your house. That yeah. is step one of a long journey, because what you're yes. really talking about is so much more to do with the software, with the legislation around it, with how you, how you mitigate for the fact that people can now produce their own power and store it. That changes the picture for a grid system or a big generating system. They're going, hang on, well, I've, got, I've just spent billions of pounds building a power station. And these customers don't need very much of that, you know, the, the, the whole, yes. the whole, our whole energy network changes. Exactly. And I think the models by which we expect to pay for that energy network will have to change as well. You know, um, the, the grid, the energy grid is a kind of social good. Yeah. It's an infrastructure that we have that everyone needs to rely on. So we need to make sure that the models we make around how we do these new energy technologies utilize that grid and enhance it rather than destroy it. Because it's not going to be so much by, you're just buying electricity from the grid because you're going to be probably in you know, five, ten years time, yeah. you're going to be buying less electricity from the grid anyway. Yeah. From outside, and, and in fact, the cost of the energy is already a, a minor it's proportion a of yeah. that. You know, if you're paying 15p for your energy, then probably only four pence of that is paying for the electricity. Yeah. But that's not very visible to consumers. They yeah. don't understand that. And I think making that visible so they understand what they're actually paying for yeah. um, is maybe one of the mechanisms that will get used yeah. to kind of... Um, and so where, do you, so where do you see this going then in the next, say, 10 years? Where do you see Moixa going? I mean, are you developing new technologies or new systems? What, 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 yes, yeah, so what, our, what I mean, our vision as a company is that, that by adding intelligence, by adding this intelligence that we've been talking about to batteries, that we can be a big part of enabling this transition of renewables. We can enable the world to live on renewables. And doing that is not just about you know, batteries in homes, it's also about uh, making sure that we can utilise the batteries that are coming in the, in the electric vehicle revolution. You know, we, we're very clear that the majority of batteries that are going to be out there over the next 10 years or so are going to be attached to a set of wheels. Right. And, um, and the, you know, making sure that we're able to, to kind of really make those available as flexibility for the grid as well. And, and make that into a benefit, not a stressor for the, for the grid. And that, so that's why we're working with people like Honda, where they've really understood that as a, a, a massive you know, automotive manufacturer, if they're gonna make this transition to electric vehicles, they have to be interested in and take responsibility for 
the implications around energy in that um, we can control then not only just putting energy in when we put energy into the, into the vehicle battery, but also pull that energy out to power, um, to power other things, to power your home or power buildings.